Thank you. Um, I'm here today to talk about journal guide. I want to start with a hypothetical. You're a busy researcher. You've got your students, your grants, yeah, everything like that. But you know that publishing is the ultimate coin in the realm. But there are so many factors. How do you choose where do you want your work to go? And where do you even know how to look to find all of your options? And in today's world, there's more and more journals being launched every day. You're getting emails. You don't know what if these journals are, are real or not, uh, how they fit, or if they really even uh, fit your research. So at Research Square, we support authors. We do this with manuscript services through American Journal Experts, with independent peer review through Rubric. And our customers have told us over and over again, I need help finding a journal. I don't know where to send this now that you've edited it. That was the, the, formation, the motivation behind Journal Guide, to have a free tool. This is, it is completely free. Uh, to be a trusted source of information that covers journals. And this gives them the, the best fit for their work. It tells them where there might be some new journals that they're interested in finding. It's a discovery tool. And it provides them verification that when uh, they see certain key metrics and in information that they know it's legitimate. And I think this is a problem that isn't just the customers. It's also on, on the side of the publishers. And we've seen that with some recent press and also just the, the constant struggle of, of identifying journals uh, that may or may not be reputable. So for researchers, it looks like this. They come in. They can find and compare journals. They can go straight to a journal page if they know the name and find information. And we've worked with researchers to have this uh, convenient standard layout that has the, the information that they want and links to the journal page so that they'll always be available. They do a keyword search or title and abstract of their draft, for instance. Then they're going in, they're finding results, and so the, the results are sorted by journal. So they're able to say, OK, this is matched to a, a, a journal where I might be interested in sending this work, because recent articles uh, covered the same topic. They can see what these articles are. They can uh, see the abstract if that's provided to us through the metadata. And uh, we are now joining Crossref, so these will link out within the next few weeks to the publisher's page for full content. And uh, they can also compare them. We've uh, worked with researchers again to decide what kind of factors they're looking at. And they want to be able to look side by side. And again, at the bottom here is that button to, to submit and get, go right to the journal. But uh, I'm here also to say this is a benefit for journals in a number of ways. The submissions are well matched. That saves hassle. You're not getting off topic submissions. Discovery. Well, we, we hear repeatedly that people have found new journals in here that they then want to submit to or follow or read or subscribe to. It also provides that the journals themselves control over the data that's presented. So representatives from the journals or publishers can log in and update information, aims and scope, things like that. So as things change, you're presenting the message you want to present. Data in, we have the article metadata feeds where we're available. We have about 15 publishers right now and, and a few other things. Profile information, but we're also looking to provide data back out. So this is information on who's using it, the demographics, how they're using it, how they're comparing your journal, um, and how your journal compares to other journals in that same category. And this is something that we're still developing, so we're interested in hearing what information that uh, a journal representative would look for from, from us. But another thing here is to take a stand for reputable publishers. So um, we want to provide a place that a, a researcher can go and say, OK, yes, we're getting information from Thomson Reuters. We're getting information from Scopus, for instance, that these journals are indexed. They do have an impact factor. Um, and so the researcher can then understand that they're not finding a website somewhere of a journal that, that claims it has something or is making up its own metrics. Um, and then we're providing information directly from the journal. So when they see that claimed stamp at the bottom of a profile, they know you were there. And this is really what the, they're getting the real information. And over time, we, we want to work, we're working now toward labeling the journals that, that meet these rigorous criteria. We're not intending to reinvent the wheel, but there's a lot of really good um, standards that are already out there uh, to, to end up in certain indices, for instance. And, and we can take that, give a stamp so the, the researchers really know that they're, they're finding a trusted home for their research. And we've been approached by other, other stakeholders, funders, libraries, universities, who see the benefit in having a centralized location for open access policy information, for instance, by journal or, or cost. So what you can do, um, you can check and make sure your journal is in there. So we, we're taking uh, our data is, is pretty clean, but there's going to be some mistakes. There are going to be some things that got left out. Um, make sure that, that that's right. Um, claim an update if you want. 
and provide us article metadata. The match works best if the article abstract is available so we can search against it. There's the email. Please come find me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.